now that our model is sliced, now we can begin to think about how we want to uh, lay out our development on our sheet. So let's start by bringing back our two views. And we have our model view here. And we have our sheet layout view here. And so now I want to come up here. And I can uh, dock this menu back because I'm not using it. And I'm going to unfold my development. And you'll note here that it comes out into 20 parts. Uh, and also, I have my size here, my uh, height, width, and depth. And my depth is my largest dimensions at 281 millimeters. And so I know that I want to make this model approximately 3 feet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come up here on my 2D menu. And I'm going to use my chain scale. And I'm going to set the scale for this model. Now, what you can do here is I'm going to take my largest dimension. I'm going to make that 900 millimeters because that's going to be the largest size. I want you to take note of the scale factor. Take note of the scale factor because that becomes very important when you want to construct larger models that get beyond the 2,000 millimeter constraint that uh, Pepakura has for its models. Because I could conceivably uh, build this model in parts. Uh, and let's say I was doing like a head and shoulders model, where if I knew that my head, I wanted to build it at 12 feet. I knew that my head was at, let's say, 6 feet. Uh, and, and I... Uh, and, and I want to try and explain this. And I scaled in my computer model, I scaled my head to be six feet, and I knew that that was its scale. Using the scale factor, I could bring in other elements from that model, employ the scale, same scale factor, and I could uh, build a much larger development. It allowed you to modularize your um, peppercorn models. And, and that'll be a subject of a later tutorial, but it's important to note that. Okay, and so now when I do this, you notice that I get more sheets, more sheets. And I like to be a little bit more organized when I do my build-outs with Pepecura, and I'm going to show you some of the things that I, that I do. So I'm going to use my selection tool here, Control-M, and I'm going to select parts of my model right here. Okay, and, and I know that I want that to sort of be like my right arm. And I'm going to take those parts like this, and I'm going to slide these down here like that. I'm going to slide these over like so. And I'm going to just group these together. So that's one arm. That's the one arm. So if I select all of these, it updates to show that. Okay. Now I'm going to select my bridge components. like so. And these are all the bridge components. So I'm going to move these over like this. And notice how the window sort of expands when you do that. And I'm going to select these. So these are all my bridge components right here. And these are obviously are all the components that make up the right side over here. And so my model is a, a little bit somewhat more organized. And you note that Pepecura, uh, when you do this, and so I'm going to cluster these together so that here and here, you notice that it uh, increases and decreases the sheets as you uh, do that. Okay, And now, once I have these together, um, I, and this becomes really important when you're doing more complicated models that um, you have the tool right here which says check corresponding um, faces. And I'm going to click that and that opens up my parts list. Okay, And by default it selects all of your parts. Okay, But what I want to do now is that I'm going to select these and you know it begins to select out these parts and those are all my bridge sections okay, that are selected. And I'm going to go into change name. And I'm going to call this bridge underscore pound. The pound key is very important. 
uh, because that will replace the numbers uh, in a sequence. So when I do that, those are all like bridge one, bridge two, bridge three, bridge four, and I can go through and it numbers those parts there through that section. Okay, um, and let me clear that. And now I'm going to select all of these. Select that part, and I can do it over here since I organized them. And you note how it tells you which ones correspond to which. And I'm going to call this, um, change the name, and I'm going to call this arm1 underscore pound. Okay, and those are all uh, those pieces together. And now I can come over here, select these. And I'm going to call these, change the name to arm2 underscore pound. Okay. And that selects all of those. Okay. And so now I can close this because um, and my parts are uh, named uh, logically. Okay. And what I can begin to do is that I can begin to think about how I'm going to lay my parts out. Okay, and here what I will do is that I'll sort of like um, maximize this window now because I know um, how my parts fit and I can concentrate on the layout of my uh, development. And so we'll take this part right here. Uh, we'll add this part right here. Um, and oops. One other thing that I'd like to do before I do this is that this is a good time to deal with flaps, okay? And we have our flap tool, which is located here. And what I want to do is that I want to change the shape of my flaps. Now, the flaps are 5 millimeters, which is really tiny. I'm going to change my flap size to um, 15 millimeters, which is a little bit more than a half inch. And I might even go up to, like, uh, 20 so it'll be like a three-quarter inch flap. And I'm going to apply this to all flaps. And you notice that my flap size is decreased, which now allows a lot of these parts to fit on my sheet. And so once I've done that, I'm going to come in and I'm going to begin to lay these out. Okay. And here, with these, I realize that I may have to rotate the parts. So that's going to get rotated like so. And this will go on this sheet um, like so. Okay. And what I can do. Uh, I know that from my, um, if I open up my my window again, split my window, and check my corresponding faces, that all of these faces are part of like arm two. Okay, these are all part of arm two. So to help me organize this, I can use my text tag, and I can input. the name of that um, element right there and I'm going to make that 72 and I'm going to click on OK and that's ARM2 and I'm going to put another one over here and I'm going to type in ARM2 okay and so now this I know that these two all of this is related to ARM2 Okay, and now I can uh, come in and grab these parts right here, and I can rotate these using my rotate tool. Pick an axis of rotation here, pick an axis of rotation there, rotate that like that, and I can lay these parts out. And I can grab all of these with my select tool, move these up here and I can take these and rotate use my rotation tool to rotate these in, in place 
like so. And this is a surface packing operation, and this is the work. Okay, and you want to make sure that you have uh, space in between these. You can pack these as tight as you want, but up top you want to make sure that you have a little space there. Okay, that goes like that, and we're going to take this, and we're going to use our rotation tool to rotate that like so. And let's maximize this window. And we're going to bring this over here. We're going to rotate this in place like so. And finally, we're going to fit this piece in like so. And I'm going to get that in there like that and see if there's a way that I can pack these other two in there. And I'm going to take this one and I'm going to rotate it vertically so that it fits in there like that. And that's done. And this is uh, all of these elements are a part of ARM1. So I will go in with my text tool and place it in here and I'll type in ARM1. Okay. And this is so when I come back to the model 10 months from now, I'll know where the parts uh, are located. I'm going to pause this for a second as I pack the rest of this. Okay, here are the parts um, laid out and labeled. Um, might want to do a couple slight adjustments here, move that in just a little bit. And um, and that's what's nice about the padding is that you can go right up to that line and know that you'll have a little space left um, when you lay these out in your sheets uh, finally. And here are all our parts. And I'm going to end this tutorial here. And in the next part of the tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit about flaps, adding color, and some of the other things that you can do uh, with your development um, before you output your files. But uh, this completes this section on folding and organizing. It's really important to organize your model so that when you come back in your building, you can actually lay out the parts, know where they go, open up Pepakura and use your screen and your corresponding edges tool as a means uh, of, because like when you have your corresponding edges tool up, you can select the part and it tells you exactly what goes where. And this is really helpful when you're trying to rebuild your model, um, although the numbers uh, do help uh, in, that, in that regard. But we'll talk uh, more about formatting these parts um, when we get into the next tutorial. But it's really nice to organize it properly. Uh, and and it, it pays off in the long term when you choose this approach.